What do you say to those who say box squatting is dangerous? To me, any squat is dangerous if you do it incorrect. But what are the biggest mistakes you see to those who say box squatting is dangerous and then you actually see them box squat? Oh, well, yeah, they don't have a box squat. You know, you, uh, you know, Albert Einstein said you can win an argument with an intelligent man, but you'll never win an argument with an ignorant man. Yes. And Albert was right. Yeah, everybody talks about box squats. I watch them, I go, That's why, what the hell you're doing? That's not a box squat, you know. Touch and goes. I mean, falling on the box, I, we've seen it all. Knees three inches forward, you've seen it all, and I've seen it all. Yeah, no, listen, box squatting, sitting on a box. If, if your back sore, uh, the audience, what do you do? You stand up the rest of the freaking day, you sit down. Now think about that, you sit down. Uh, what constitutes a safe and healthy back is abdominal pressure, inner abdominal pressure. The greater inner abdominal pressure you have, the less spinal cord pressure you have. So you, uh, box squats are completely safe. If they weren't safe, how was these guys squatting 1200s? Yeah. How's a girl squat 775 at 165? Huh? How you do that? Yeah, they're, they're completely safe. It's just, it's just bogus. Um, you know, people don't know anything. They don't want to learn, and they'll never learn. I've, I've just seen it. So how are the accessories uh, laid out for squats? Okay. Uh, personally, you know, squatting is a lot of lower back, hamstring and glutes, of course. And so for the lower back, uh, the big extra compound exercise will be good mornings. I like a lot of bent over good mornings and some arch, but mostly bent over. Uh, glute ham raises, our inverse curl, um, our uh, M MD, uh, MR19, um, and then for uh, the glutes, um, reverse hypers and pull throughs. You know, people don't have a reverse hyper, which everyone should because it's a, it's a therapeutic device. It's not a powerlifting tool, although that's what we use it for, but it's therapeutic as well because it's a traction device. Do pull-throughs. Stand up, use a low pulley machine, stand on two boxes, grab a cable the, uh, on the cable and squat up and down by holding the cable in between your legs. It's unbelievable. Tom Waddle used to complain because Tom was nuts, but he goes, these damn things make my hamstrings too big. He was always complaining. I'm going, I wish it, that, that I had big hamstrings too, but bigger they got, the more I lifted. Yeah. And the pull throughs was a ton of it. If you don't straight leg it, it's low back. If you squat up and down, it's glutes and hamstrings. Basically where your hamstring ties into the glute. And where the hamstring ties into the glute does seven times work that it does where it inserts behind the knee. Just remember that. It's easy to look at. Look at a person's knee, look at a person's glute. Just like the bench, can you tell what needs to be worked on depending on how or where they fail on a lift? Yeah, well, first of all, you see a lot of guys, they'll come here, people, you know, Tom, people come here with time to squat and we watch in terrible form. Um, a lot of people want to push you for your feet first. You have to drive into the bar. You're, what are you trying to lift? The barbell. So to, to lift correctly, you have to push into the barbell first, then your feet are activated, not the other way around. If you jump over a high bar, uh, the first thing that moves towards the bar is your head, not your ankle. So it's the same process. Wherever, you're, you know, wherever you're, your head goes, your body follows. That's in all sports. Um, so I'm talking about like swim people. Okay. And another thing, if when they squat and they come off the box, their knees pull in, weak hips. You got to use bands, pull your knees apart, walk with sleds sideways and just forward and backward, but a lot of sled work. But wide box squatting and wide sumo deadlift and will build the hips. But you always got to push them out. Do not let them come in. Then if they fail two inches off the box or three inches, is that they have strong hips and then the transition? Yeah, normally it's transitioning through one part of the, the, the muscle system into another. You see that a lot. See, that's why West Side years ago did a high box squat. Because if you go to a meet, especially roll lifters, uh, they'll miss just right up, you know, a couple inches above parallel. That's what they mean. They'll miss at the bottom. Mm -hmm. They miss at the top. It's always funny to me. You make such a big deal about, you know, squat depth, but you don't, you know, you miss a couple inches above. There's where the, the critical point of the squat is. Yeah. yeah, it's not, you know, I mean, yes, you got to break parallel and do a legal squat, but it's a two or three inches above is where you get in trouble. That's the transition point. What happens when someone gets off the box real fast, their legs start straight down, they start rounding over? A weak, weak lower back and a normally weak stomach. No one pays attention to your stomach. You have to train the stomach. You know, when you're born, what's the first thing a person does? They take a breath of air. Your stomach is absolutely, to me, the most essential muscle in the body. Mm -hmm. You have to grab that breath of air, 
before you do anything. Yeah. And so it's very important. I mean, you just you just got and heavy abs, not crunchers. No, do some real abs. I like leg lifts. Mm -hmm. A lot of leg lifts, it would activate the hips, but these muscles have to be connected. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, John said one time, um, you know, the ART guy, he said that, you know, the body's got 640 muscles, or does it have one? Yeah. You're right. They have to work in unison if you're going to lift big weights. Um. Is the stomach an issue too when someone takes out the bar and they're shaking uncontrollably? Yeah, they normally don't push out on their belt if they have a belt or they don't push out, period. And then another point about abdominal training, your obliques are more important than your rectus abdominals. A lot of people don't know that. Now, there is a reason these really strong people have really wide, you know, they're really wide. Yeah. I mean, when I weighed, uh, you know, one hour weighing for seven and a half years, um, or two hour weighing, and you know, on the IPF, my, my waist was 34 and a half inches. At, at 198, and I never weighed more than 202, and I had veins all over, uh, my waist was 38 and a half. I've always had a big waist because I trained the hell out of my waist because your waist is also your lower back. And your waist has four sides, front, abs, back, lower back, sides, oblique. So you, if you neglect one of those, you're going to have problems. And I'm assuming when you put weight on the... With the pressure, is going to find the, the weakest point real fast. That's right. Any other tips for people on starting to squat or box squatting? Well, I would train exactly how Westside trains mm -hmm. because um, I just wrote an article about this. It'll be coming out soon, I suppose. I talk about training by percents. It doesn't matter if you squat 100 pounds or 1,000 pounds. If you train, if you do 25 lifts at 80, 85, and 90 percent, you're doing the exact amount of work for your, your mm -hmm. own maximal strength. Um, you know, I've seen guys go in the gym and a guy will say squats 800 and everyone else can't squat crap. Why? Because he tried to duplicate his workout. If the barbell moves too slow, you'll do, you will not develop force. Mm -hmm. you know, strength measures in velocities. So you got that's why it's imperative to trade at these percents. Um, everybody goes, you know, they go, you know, they still use Western periodization, which is ridiculous. It was outdated in 1967. Mm -hmm. um, every, when we do 25 lifts, we're doing 25 lifts for speed strength. Yeah. And uh, that's what counts. If we would train an athlete in, a, in, in for, for a three-week wave, um, we might train for exposed strength, 30 to 40%. But you got it. It doesn't do any good if you want to build explosive strength and train at 70% or train at 15%. You know, it doesn't work. You got to train the right percents. You ever wonder, everyone out there, when you get in your car, if you have a tachometer, which almost every car does, why why does it get up to 2,500 or 100? We'll say in a shift. Next year, 2,500 shifts, 2,500 shifts. Why? Optimal horsepower. The body works exactly like a, ma a machine like that. So I want to add something because it made a tremendous difference on me. Uh, back in 1975, I realized that my hips were enormously strong. And because I box squat all the time, my legs uh, were suffering just a little bit. So I started doing belt squats. I never heard of belt squats. I, in 1979, I heard about rushing doing leg squats. So I started doing belt squats. And I would stand between two benches. With a box in front of me, I'd pick up the weight, take two steps back, and squat. And um, it, it was a chain. I had a chain through the weights and a chain around my belt. We had a special belt with a hook on it. So the weight would move and swing a little bit, but you had to stabilize it. It's, um, but it, it was imperative that we did the belt squats. And by doing three belt squats like that, I did three sets of five of 500. Mm -hmm. And it just took my squat just way up. Every, we all did belt squats. And, uh, but bell squats is a really a, a tremendous exercise that all you people can do. Just rig up a couple chains, stand on two benches or anything you got, and do some bell squats. Mm -hmm. You can do like fives, you can do 20 fives, it doesn't matter. But a lot of bell squats will really help uh, take your lifts up, really help the deads too. Okay. Thank you.